Yeah, so how much is half of that? Um, six. Six. So, plus six inches. This is plus six to get to the next foot from 12 to 12 and a half. That's another six inches she has to jump. From 12 and a half to 13, that's another plus six. And from 13 to 13 and a half, that's another plus six. So now we just need to add all of those six inches together. Six inches plus six inches plus six inches plus six inches plus six inches. So basically I'm adding six five times, okay? How many inches does Dolly have to jump to reach her goal? Charlotte? 30. 30 more inches, which is the same as two and a half feet. Okay, we've done two. What's another one? Charlotte. Um, could you do number? Eleven. Number eleven. Oh, I'm sorry. Can you cross that? Well, let's see it. I mean, it, it works the same as our other long division. I'm not going to test you on it, but let's just see it, okay? So I am, you're going to have to kind of write small. So I'm going to really zoom in so you can really see, because there's going to be a lot of steps, okay? So I'm on 11, and I'm going to use a pencil. All right. So 3,906, can you see that? Yeah, all right, I'm dividing by three. I'm not gonna test you on it, I just want you to practice, okay? Three divided by three, it goes in evenly. Three divided by three equal groups. Olive? One. One, all right, one right above. Three times one is three. I subtract, I get zero. I bring nine down. Nine divided by three. Charlotte. Nine divided by three equals three. Equals three. So three times three will give me nine. I subtract and I get zero. Here's the complicated thing that we have not run into yet. I have zero that I've pulled down. Zero divided by three. It's the same kind of rule if I do three times zero. What does it equal when I do three times zero? Eliza. Zero. Zero, same rule applies. So I write zero above that zero because I can't divide it, okay? Zero divided by three is zero. So on that same working line, I'm going to pull that six all the way down. Six divided by three.
Eliza. Two. Two. So three times two, six. I subtract, I get zero. So even though we've never done anything like that before, it's the same kind of thought process that we've done on tens and ones. And if we're getting kind of used to this standard algorithm, we can kind of get it figured out. Okay. Um, what's another one you would like to see? Thanks for asking that one, Charlotte. Eliza. Can you please do number nine? Number nine, yes, I would love to do a matrix model. 28 times 28, 28 times 28. 20 times 20. Charlotte, I got the same three people helping me all day. 20, well, two times two equals four, so. Well, be 4,000. Not 4,000, that'd be too much. Wait, 400. 400. 20 times 8. Olive. 160. 160. So, 20 times 8, we uh, just did that. That's 160. Finally, 8 times 8. Eight times eight. Eliza. Um, 64. 64. 400 plus 160 is 560. 160 plus 64. Now I have to do a little bit more mental math. What is my answer for that, um, Olive? 224. 224, that is correct. All right, now I just add going down. Four plus zero is four. Six plus two is eight. Five plus two is seven. Your answer is 784. I've done one, two, three, four. I'll do one more. Oh, Olive, last one. Um, will you please do number five? Number five, fill in the sign that makes this sentence true. Think about it. Nine twelfths equals three fourths. So if nine twelfths is the same thing as three fourths, I need to write, thinking right here, three-fourths. These are the same. So if I want to kind of put my finger over top of nine-twelfths, and I can think of two-fourths. So now I'm comparing three-fourths and two-fourths. That's like me, because I put that three-fourths is equal to nine-twelfths, I'm moving that out of the way. Three fourths is comparing to two fourths greater than, less than, or equal to. Three fourths, two fourths. Charlotte? Three fourths is greater if they're greater than? Greater than two fourths. Three fourths is greater than two fourths. Okay, just a look ahead for the rest of, what? All right, there we go, zoomed out. Okay, for the wet, west, the rest of the week in simple solutions, we're kind of off a little bit because we didn't have school yesterday. You have lesson 61 is today, 
62 will be Wednesday. 63 is going to be, ah. Yee. 63 is going to be Thursday. And we will do both the quiz and 64 on Friday. Okay, so normally you don't have a lesson before the quiz, but I think it will kind of help um, us go over some of the um, things that we might see when we go on the quiz on Friday. Okay, so Wednesday, tomorrow you're doing 62, Thursday, 63. Friday, 64. And then we'll get back to our regular schedule on Monday um, with our Simple Solutions books. Um, keep in mind, my friends, um, some of you guys are coming back to school next Monday. And I'm going to be, I had you guys do every time your lesson showing that you have it completed. I'm going to be checking that your books are up to date when we come in. I think. They should be because you took pictures and I can't imagine that the pictures wouldn't show that they were done, but you never know. So I'm going to say I am checking your books when you come back on Monday. Moving on though, however, Eureka Math, we're opening up our green math book and we are going to look at lesson 21. It's the last lesson in this topic. And then we're going to kind of say goodbye to division for a little bit after our topic review, and we will come back to it. Okay. So we're going to be today on, I got to keep turning my pages, page 135 on the application problem. Page 135. Okay. Page 135, I want you to go ahead and read the question and underline parts that you think it's asking, okay? And then we will go through it together. Okay, page 135. Let's see what it's asking. A rectangle has an area of 36 square units and a width of two units. What is the unknown side length? Ooh, we've done these before. Now, it sounds like a lot of information, but we just will figure it out once we get it drawn, okay? So area, I'm underlining that. 36 square units. So they didn't say inches or centimeters, it's just squared units. And the width is two, basically question mark over length. We don't know what length is. And that's how I would first attack this problem. I would underline those things and kind of figure out what I need to do. Next, what I'm suggesting we do is draw our rectangle. We know it's just two units. I'm just going to put two U. We don't know if it's inches, meters, centimeters, what have you. And we know it's this length, but we don't know what that length is. I'm going to put an underline in a U. We also know that the area equals 36 units squared. 
We know that information. So what can I write on this side? What can I write on that side? Um, Charlotte, what can I write on this side? Well, because um, the other side equals two units, that means the other side equals two units. Yes. So I have two and two. So far, everything else, we don't know yet, okay? And in order, well, that's actually how we solve perimeter is how we normally do it. Um, we're trying to do 36 as our unit for area. So while it is nice to label everything, I do remember area equals length times width. So I can fill in some pieces right now that I know. I know that our area is 36. I have a blank for length and I know this is two. My width is two. So in order to find this, we're gonna do some division. Okay, so we're going to do 36 divided by two. In order to find our missing side length. Three divided by two is what number? I'll give you a hint, there will be a remainder. Um, Olive, what do you think I'm going to put above the three? Um, one R one. Well, we're not going to get to the remainder yet. There will be a remainder of one. I need to solve for both tens and ones. Okay. So we have two times one. So I put a two there. I subtract and I get one. That's where that remainder one comes from. Then I have to remember to bring down that six from the ones place that I'm now dividing 16 divided by two. 16 divided by two. Think of your multiplication facts. Two times something equals 16. What is that factor, that missing factor? Mason? Eight. Eight. So two times eight, 16. I subtract, I get zero. So for my missing length, I can put 18. 18 units. And from there, you could find out your perimeter. It does not ask us for our perimeter. So. Let's go ahead and write a quick little sentence. The missing side length is 18 units. Okay? Make sure you write down your sentence and give me a thumbs up when you are ready. Um, thumbs up when you have 20, 131 written down. I don't know why I said 20. I want you to say you have 135 written down. Page 135 is complete. Sophia and Eliza, thanks. I think Olive shot me a thumbs up. Charlotte's ready. Owen's ready. 
All is ready. Okay, we're all ready. Let's go ahead and move on. All right, page 21. Solve. Ooh, I'm going to zoom in. We haven't used area model in a while. Let's go ahead because they're asking us to use it. Let's go ahead and use area model. So it says solve 37 divided by two using an area model. Use long division and distributive property to record your work. So the distributive property part is just that um, number bond thing that we were showing, okay? So let's start off with, um, I want to start off with drawing 37 in a number bond. And I want to split it up because I'm going to be dividing by two. And I know 37, I don't know what I can divide by two. But I know that there's one really close that I can divide by two that will help me solve. Eliza? Do you know what that is? Um, actually, never mind. All right, I want to give us a hint, guys. Um, number two, if I have the number two and I'm dividing by it, I can always divide a um what am I trying to say? A even number by two, and it will go in evenly. So what is the closest even number without going over? What is the closest even number? Olive. 12. Well, I mean, closest to 37 is what I'm trying to say. Closest even number oh. to 37. You're fine. Sorry. I am... Um got confused on oh it's okay closest even number to 37 what do you think eliza um so um, um 20 ah uh, it's gonna be even closer owen 36. Yeah, 36. 36 is the number that I'm going to be dividing. And I have left over just one. I can't, that's going to be my remainder. So when I do 36 um, divided by two, we just did that, right? We just did that on the first page. 36 divided by two will give us 18 and we'll have a remainder of one. So the picture that we're going to draw is 36 This is one extra, that's that 37, two and 18. So 37 divided by two equals 18 with a remainder of one. Charlotte, do you have a question about that? I have a question and my question is, so whenever you do this, whenever I, like, if it's like 37 divided by three and the two sides um, are three, but what if there's one extra one? Doesn't that like make the size like different because it's like a whole like you're like adding one more? Why does that 
Like, isn't that There's a that one extra because that's our little remainder. It's it's not really to scale, Charlotte, because this is imagine like when we draw these normally, if it was on grid paper, Charlotte, it would be like the two and it would be 18 little lines. This is just like a extra cube hanging off to the side that is not you know, part of that. I know what you're saying that it would change the amount, but it's just kind of showing that there is an extra. All right. That's a good question though. Let's solve the next one using both area model. And then this time, instead of doing this distributed property thing, let's do long division. Okay. So on this next one, we're going to do 76. 76 divided by three. I want to solve it using long division first and then draw my little area model next to it. All right. So I have 76 divided by three. All right. Do you have that on your board? All right, let's start solving. Let's start solving. All right, seven divided by three. Seven divided by three. Um, Olive. Two. Two. Three times two will give me six. I subtract and I have one left over. Now I'm doing, bringing that six down. Now I'm going to do 16 divided by three. And I'm gonna tell you that we're going to have a remainder with this one. So I want you to think, this is how I kind of think in my head. Well, three times something will get me really close to 16 without going over. So I want to think of my multiples of three without getting over, going over the amount of 16. What number do you think that is? Three times something will give me a number that is less than 16. Um, Charlotte. Um, I think... Um... I think it would be like 16 divided by three. By three. Uh, by three equals. Dang it, I had it. It's okay. Um, Eliza, what number do you think that is? Five. Five will get us really close without going over. So if I put a five here, I'm thinking three times five will give me 15. I subtract and I have one left over. So my answer is 25 remainder one. And so my picture, my little area model that they want me to draw would be um, one of my sides is three, my width is three, my side length is 25, and I have one little guy left over. Looks good. If you give me a thumbs up when you are ready to move on from that. Number two makes sense. 
Great. Oh, got to let a friend in to the Zoom. All right. Let's look at number three. It looks like the area model's already drawn with it. We just have to figure out the following. Carolina solved the following division problem by drawing this area model. So she looks like she did 40, 12, and 4, which is one square unit left over. So if we want, we got to think she was solving what is 40 plus 12? 40 plus 12. Owen. 52. She did 52, and what did she divide it by? That's this width. What did she divide it by? Eliza. Um, she divided it by four. She divided it by four. Okay. And she got, well, we're going to have to see, um, I really don't care for the distributive property. Um, she's got one square unit left over. Um, I want to see what her answer was because I want to see what this missing side length is. So um, we can do both long division and distributive property to see. But if she had 52, if you can think back to last week, that's 52 up above. And one side is 40, the other side is 12, and we're dividing both by four. So that's 40 divided by four and 12 divided by four. What did she get when she did 40 divided by four? Charlotte? 10. 10. So I'd write 10 there. I can label hers as 10 right there. Actually, she didn't do 52 divided by 4. She did 53 divided by 4. I forgot to add in that square unit. That's my fault. And then 12 divided by 4 will give us what? Ellen? 3. 3. Okay. So I would label 3 right there. Um, and then over to the side, he just has, you know, one, I guess Carolina. She has one extra that she didn't divide out. We can also solve this using district. I mean, not distributed property, but long division. I'm going to put it over to the side so we can connect all three ways. This is the distributive property, which can also be called the number bond. We have the area model shown. Now let's looking, let's look at our long division to make sure that we are solving it correctly. So 53 divided by four. I know I'm asking you something that the book hasn't asked us to do. What is five divided by four? Charlotte? Five divided by four equals um, four? Not four. I think I know where you're going with that one. Owen? One with a remainder of one. Yeah, so when we do it, we'll end up with a remainder of one. Don't write that remainder yet. We have to do four times one and get four. We subtract and then we get that remainder. I bring down that three. How many times? does um now all right if i'm i'm gonna slow down for a second that four is connecting it over to this 40 okay 
Remember, we did 40 divided by 4 equals 10. That's like the same thing that we just did right here. And our leftover amount is that 10, which um, we're getting with this 12, right? It'll, when we do all of it, it'll make a little bit more sense. But knowing that 13 divided by 4, what's our answer? 13 divided by four. Look at what we did for 12 divided by four. Eliza, is your hand raised? Owen, what is our answer? 13 divided by four. Three with a remainder of one. Yeah, so three times four will give us 12. We subtract and get one left. See, if I look over here, it's the same as when I do 12 divided by four, okay? Now I get three, I just have a remainder. That's this one that's sticking out over there, okay? So our answer is still 13 Remainder one, no matter which way you do it, 10 plus this three will give us 13 and we have a remainder of one. If I look at our picture, we have 13, remainder one. Any way we do it, we still have the same answer, okay? So the point I wanna make is that any way that you decide to solve, you should get the same answer every way, okay? Make sure, I'm kind of looking at Go Guardian right now and I see some of you are doing other activities other than doing our problem set, okay? You're not looking at any work that I'm not doing right now, all right? Um, what I would like you to do is don't, you don't have to do area model. I'm changing the directions on page 138. What I would like you to do is you're going to solve the following problems using either area model, long division, or distributive property, which is the number bond. Number bond. Choose which way you want to solve. Choose strategy, okay? So you're gonna look, there are six questions on this page. I'm going to give us independent time right now to work on all six questions. That's not saying you're going to get done with all six. You are going to just get some practice time in. So you are choosing if you want to do area model, long division, or distributive property. And you are going to spend the next 10 minutes while we're still on Zoom to work on these six questions. And I will go over the answers of some of them in 10 minutes, okay? So at 1.50, we're gonna stay on Zoom. You're gonna keep working and you're going to try four through nine on your own, choosing whichever strategy you would like.
Not all of the answers will have remainders. Some of them will have no remainder. Zoom recording. Um, I get one left over. Six comes down. 16 divided by four is four. Four times four, 16. Subtract zero. My answer is 14. So my answer then for 58 divided by four is going to be very similar. However, it looks like I might have uh, a remainder with that one. So let's say I did just um, long division. 58 divided by four, five divided by four is one. Four times one is four. I subtract, I have one left over. Eight comes down. 18 divided by four, I can get really close with 16. So I know four and 16 is four. I multiply four times four and I get 16. I subtract and I have two left over. My answer is 14 remainder two. Eliza? Um, I just wanted to say that once, um, once I like finished the problem, what I did was I, I checked my work. You checked your work with multiplication. I really like that. I, then you can really make sure that you have the correct answer. Good job. Um, 66 divided by five. That doesn't seem like I'm going to have a, um, an even answer. It seems like one that would have a remainder. Let's do 66, ooh, and then do a number bond. Um, because I'm using five, I might want to use the number 50. Um, and then 50 divided by five equals five. And then, I mean, not five, see, 10. Um, and then, if I did 16, I know 16 and five don't, doesn't work, but I know 15 and five will work. If I do 15 divided by five, I get three and I have just one left over. If I add 10 and three, I get 13 remainder one. Let's see it using long division, 66 divided by five, Six divided by five is five, Oop. not five, is one. I multiply and I get five. Six minus five is one. I bring that six down. 16 divided by five is three. Three times five, 15. I subtract, I get one. 13, remainder one. Last one. Holding on tight, 79 divided by three. Let's just do 79 divided by three, long division. Seven divided by three is two. Two times three is six. I subtract, I get one left over. Nine comes down. 19 divided by three is um, six. Six times three, 18, I subtract, I have one. 26, remainder one. Okay, I know that that was a lot of work. You guys worked very hard for 10 minutes on your own. You just checked your answers with my answers or you did what Eliza did and she checked her own answers by doing multiplication and addition. Um, we're skipping number 10. Um, 10 can be done on your own. Um, solved any way you would like. Your exit ticket is on page 141. You're going to look at the picture that Kyle drew to find the unknown length. Um, what is your division equation that he, so, that he modeled? And then you're going to solve using area model, long division, distributive property. You're gonna decide which one. You don't have to do all three. 
So I'm glad that these friends, you guys stayed on because it looks like some friends signed off before I was done giving directions. Um, so you're gonna solve it using one of those ways. And I'm gonna give you a hint. Um, look at how Carolina solved number three on page 137. Okay, that's a very similar question to what you're doing on page 148. I'm going to write hint, look at number three on page 137. Okay, and that's some help that will help you out is if you look at number three on page 137. And if you followed along and you wrote everything I wrote for number three, you should really be able to solve our, your exit ticket, okay? You're seeing what is the division equation and you're doing one of those three strategies, okay? It's two o'clock. You may do this independently um, remember, we have a math, we have a Zoom in the morning for morning meeting before you go and do things independently tomorrow. Okay. Bye. Have a wonderful afternoon. Bye. Bye. Bye, Anasi.